Hi there, you're very welcome to this episode of Dark Vanishings. I hope you had a great festive season, however you chose to celebrate it. Today's case is based in Ireland and it is one of the most prominent cases in Ireland, the disappearance of Trevor Dealey. Here we see Trevor in a photograph looking happy and relaxed, but sadly Trevor would disappear after a Christmas party uh, with the firm that he worked for, which was Bank of Ireland, Asset Management Division on Leeson Street in Dublin. They had had their Christmas party. It was December 8th in 2000, and Trevor would disappear after this night out, never to be seen again. Trevor was just 22 years old when he disappeared. We see his family here who have been truly inspirational in their search for Trevor. On that fateful night, he decided after the Christmas party at about 3.30 in the morning to pop into the Bank of Ireland where he worked. It was en route on his way home. He wanted to get an umbrella. It was raining, uh, there was a taxi strike, it was windy. It made perfect sense. He has never been seen since. There have been two updates, one about six years ago and one in the last few weeks. I'm gonna play you the older update first. Trevor is missing since the early hours of December 8th, 2000. Shortly after we learned of his disappearance, we discovered CCTV footage of him walking down Haddington Road at 4.14am. To this day, this remains the last confirmed sighting of Trevor. The reason we are here today is to appeal to that person or persons who knows what happened next. As a family, we have never believed that people can disappear into thin air. We know someone knows something and we ask that you come forward to put an end to this relentless nightmare. Many people over the past 16 years have questioned why we continue to search for Trevor. The answer is simple if you knew Trevor. We can sum it up by saying if the situation was reversed, he would never give up on us. We have felt for many years that a fresh review conducted on Trevor's case would be very beneficial utilising current day technologies. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to the team that Superintendent Joseph Gannon and Detective Superintendent Peter O'Boyle assembled last year to take this review on. They are still working through this process but the technology used to clean up the CCTV footage being shown today is one example of the kind of approach we were hoping for. We are very grateful for all of the help we've received to date from the public. However, one glaring fact remains. We still need your help. Somebody somewhere knows something. Please help us find Trevor. Please come forward. Thank you. So in the enhanced CCTV footage, we see in the top left-hand corner a man in black, and we just see Trevor passing there. Now, this man in black was actually there half an hour before Trevor arrived. He takes a phone call, and as Trevor approaches, he heads 20 metres up the street to the next pillar beside the gate through which Trevor uh, will enter. So he actually arrives there before Trevor does, which makes me think that, you know, he must have known that Trevor was about to enter the bank. You know, was the bank, in fact, being cased? And perhaps they were waiting for one of these employees after the Christmas night to head back to the premises. And this may have given them an in to some kind of robbery. Again, we have to remember that equally, this could just be a man waiting to get home or perhaps he's looking for money, etc. Now, he talks to Trevor at the gate and he kind of looks Trevor up and down to such an extent that Trevor's a little uncomfortable and he looks back at the man and the man makes a great play of, you know, looking like he's looking in the other direction. And Trevor sort of brushes this off and he actually then just enters the bank where he has a cup of coffee with his colleague Carl Pender. He tells him about the night, he checks his email, he makes a to-do list, and we see him re-emerge with his umbrella sometime later. Here we see him locking up again, and again, the casual ease with which staff are coming in and out it's very possible this is an area with high an area of Dublin with high criminality that this place was actually being watched potentially by criminals. 
as Trevor puts up his umbrella, it almost looks like he's talking to someone, but it could just be a reflex action as he puts up his umbrella. We then see Trevor walking down uh, the road. He will come into view now just shortly. He's a little unsteady on his feet, though Carl Pender would say he was perfectly fine. He was merry. He wasn't sort of steaming drunk or anything like that. And now we will see a man in black who everybody thought was following Trevor, including the Gardaí. In fact, the Gardaí for many years thought that this man in black that we'll now see coming into focus was actually the same man in black that was talking to Trevor at the gate. So this has been the dominant narrative for, for many, many years. The enhanced CCTV footage would also show that two minutes after Trevor went into the bank, two more men came along. Uh, and at one point, there were actually three men just standing outside the gate uh, of the Bank of Ireland looking in. So a little eerie, but it would turn out that uh, the Gardaí were satisfied that, you know, the two men that had joined, they were colleagues and they weren't in any way sinister. So the big update to the case in the last few weeks has been covered in all of the newspapers. I've actually put the links underneath the video if you'd like to read some of those pieces. Here we see it covered in the Irish Times, is that further enhancement to the CCTV footage has revealed definitively that the man walking behind Trevor down the street as he heads home is not in fact the man seen talking to Trevor at the pillar by the bank. Uh, and this man has been ruled out as being in any way sinister. It was also determined that he did give a statement um, many years ago when Trevor initially disappeared. So this is a huge update in the case. Another consideration is could Trevor have harmed himself? Uh, just a week before he uh, you know, went to this Christmas party, he flew to Alaska, he got cheap tickets from his friend Glenn who used to work in the airline industry and he went to see a student that he really liked who'd been on a semester abroad um, program here in Ireland but he got the brush off when he arrived and uh, so, so that could have been potentially pretty devastating and it's easy to look at people like Trevor we see him here the life and soul of the party and think that you know everything is rosy for Trevor when he could be hiding or could have been hiding sadnesses maybe romantic rejections he couldn't get relationships off the ground for whatever reason you know and uh, he could potentially have been quite lonely so the possibility of suicide was also explored and divers did search the canal also in case he'd fallen in accidentally, but his body was not found. But Haddington Road is actually quite close to Sandy Mount Beach and Sandy Mount Strand. I know this because my sister used to live on Haddington Road. And when I would go and visit her, it would just take us about 25 minutes, uh, you know, short walk to reach the beach. Could Trevor have walked onto Haddington Road that night, determined to somehow take his life, just to walk out uh, into the sea? He wouldn't be the first person to end his life in that way or the last. Um, it seems unlikely, though. Would you collect an umbrella if you were going to end your life and make a to-do list for the next day? And um, Also, friends and family say that for the most part, uh, despite, you know, the ups and downs that happen in life, Trevor was a very upbeat guy, you know. Uh, the other consideration is could he have left the country, but his passport was found in uh, his apartment. I always wondered, was this actually a tiger kidnapping? A tiger kidnapping is where a bank official is held up and they have to get money from the bank. It's usually a crime committed by you know criminal gangs. Another variation of the crime is that the criminals hold up the bank officials loved ones and they must get money in order to uh, get their loved ones back and it's a very lucrative form of crime and it was really starting to gain traction around this time and here it's covered in the Irish Independent they write a piece about it and they even describe a tiger kidnapping that took place in Kildare, County Kildare, you know, it's a crime that occurs throughout the nation. And I wonder, was the bank being cased? Uh, they weren't necessarily targeting uh, Trevor, but they knew that some employee was going to go back that night after the party. And uh, it just happened to be Trevor on that occasion. Another possibility is, could this have just been an opportunistic crime at Christmas? And I was reading this piece in The Guardian by a senior lawyer who describes the 12 crimes of Christmas. And crime can actually increase by anything up to 20% over Christmas. You know, burglaries, stalkings, muggings of drunk people on the street, rapes, again, of people who are 
drunk, you know, sexual offences. You know, Trevor was a little unsteady uh, on his feet. Did somebody, you know, with bad intent just, you know, strike? In 2017, an informant would come forward to say that Trevor had, in fact, been killed by a ruthless Dublin gang. Uh, they bet him up, they shot him, etc. Suggesting that this was linked to his role in the bank, he was just the wrong person, uh, the wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time, if you like, tragic. I was watching this documentary called The Celtic Cartel on Prime, and it really gives you an insight into uh, the dynamics of these kind of gangs. I'm not saying these particular uh, gang members were involved, but uh, there is a very high price to pay as an informant. It may give an indication as to why there is such a culture of secrecy around Trevor's disappearance if a gang is involved. Quick Google search reveals that tiger kidnappings are incredibly prevalent in Ireland right up to the present date. Um, this is the poster for Trevor. Uh, the Crime Stoppers number is there. There's also a reward of 100,000 euros. Now, if a gang and a, a serious high level gangster is involved in Trevor's disappearance, I think it's actually going to take a lot more than 100,000 for one of them to sort of rat each other out. In that Celtic cartel documentary that I watched, and by the way, I'm not saying that any of those particular gangs were involved. Some of those gangs members would have been very young at the time of Trevor's disappearance. But it just was interesting because it gave you an insight into their lifestyle. These gangs today are, you know, money laundering sums of 200 million euros in the space of a few months. So I think to get a criminal to come forward with the truth is going to take a minimum of a million euros and witness protection. This could be crowdfunded. And I think the Irish nation would certainly, you know, uh, back that call for funding, you know, via a crowdfund. And I think a body language expert would also be helpful in terms of analysing the body language of the man at the pier, you know, uh, you know, at the pillar talking to Trevor whether he was sinister or not. When a case like this has an update, you've always got to evaluate your own analysis. And Trevor Dealey case, I'm from Ireland, was the first case that I did on this channel. I remember when I did the Somerton man and they discovered everybody thought he was a spy. And I said in my video that I didn't think he was a spy. And I also thought that he probably had some sort of heartbreak and his identity has been determined. And it turns out he he wasn't a spy from what they can see. And he did have some heartbreak. So um, in relation to Trevor Dealey, I did also think that the man walking behind Trevor was pursuing Trevor. I did have the wherewithal, though, to point out that he could also conceivably just be a regular guy going home or not the man in black, but an accomplice, uh, you know, so I did also explore other options in the video, such as suicide and muggings and sexual attack. I am beginning to think that, you know, Tiger kidnapping remains high on my list in terms of what happened to Trevor. And I think that perhaps the informant that came forward is giving a hint of what did actually happen to Trevor, but maybe quite fearful of giving the full truth. Um, but I, I also now think that an opportunistic Christmas type style attack, a sexual attack or a mugging that went wrong could also be, uh, you know, higher than I originally thought. I think that could also be a, a, a contender. Um, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see uh, what, you know, emerges about Trevor, you know, with the family's continued efforts and the Gardaí. I think eventually, I do think in time, this case will be cracked. And I really hope that is the case for the family. Mark, Trevor's brother, would say that, you know, the discovery that the man in black you know, walking down the street was not the man at the pillar was bittersweet because, you know, even though it ruled out, you know, that this person was benevolent, it still hasn't given them the answers that they need. And I really do hope that they find those answers and they find them soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe and comment on this video and any other Dark Vanishings video that you'd like to uh, like. Every like, every comment, every new subscriber means the absolute world to me thank you all for your support in 2023 you guys are just the best i actually am working on the paddy moriarty disappearance in australia at the moment and also michael rockefeller's disappearance and i'm also thank you marcus for the recommendation i i did do the kurt cobain video i'm not super happy with it i thought it was a little on the long side and i just want to have another go at it again uh, so that will be coming out as well thank you all for all your suggestions and uh, I'll see you in the next episode of Dark Vanishings. Do take care and all the very best.